Hello and welcome to the second lecture of Analog Integrated Circuits. Uh, in the first lecture, we had a tour of the semiconductor industry and uh, its history. Uh, now, with a more formal beginning to the contents of the course, in this second lecture, we are going to study about, or rather, we are going to begin the study about the operation of the fires and the sub blocks and sub components that comprise uh, the op amp. So a little recap of the amplifiers. What is an amplifier supposed to do? So it receives a weak signal. That signal can be in the form of voltage or current. And then it produces an amplified version of it at the output. That amplified version again can be in the form of a voltage or uh, variations in the current. Just for the sake of demonstration, uh, an amplifier card, uh, in fact, an audio amplifier card is shown here. So you can see there are some input stages, inputs, and then there are some output ports there, with also the power signal. So you can well identify the components where they reside. So for instance, I believe this is for the speaker stage. This is the power. These are all the tuning parameters. And these are more supposedly the mic uh, inputs. So what does an ideal amplifier do? An ideal amplifier uh, if we talk about an ideal amplifier, it should have infinite input impedance, which have an extremely high gain, and it should have uh, zero output impedance. Uh, and as we know that ideals seldom exist, so we do not have an ideal amplifier per se. Uh, but let's see what is the next big, this, this thing that we have. And by the way, if uh, you are a bit confused about, about these requirements that I've listed here, please refer to the uh, lectures that I have uploaded on the YouTube uh, to have an understanding of these requirements. Okay, so a single amplifier cannot produce all these uh, features that we want. So what's the remedy? The multi-stage amplifiers come to the rescue. So we have different multi-stage amplifiers. For instance, if we have a common source with a common drain configuration, it can provide you with a very high input impedance of good gain and uh, a very low output impedance. It is far far cry from the ideal amplifier, but at least you will have a flavor of all the three major attributes. Apart from that, uh, there are also problems related to the stability, the bandwidth of the circuit, that is the frequency of operation. And uh, when we try to make multi-stage amplifiers, then the circuit grows in size. So this is uh, what we recall from our studies of the amplifiers in the previous courses. So uh, before we move forward, uh, why do we need amplifiers once again? Okay, to amplify the signal, anything else? Uh, when there is another requirement, it is not really for the amplifier, rather we have requirement for the signal processing. Whatever is the signal that we are getting from a source, uh, we need to perform some uh, operations over it. Uh, of course, this will be done through circuits. Nowadays, everything is going digital, but uh, most of the inventions that we have today, they have their roots back about seven or eight decades. So for example, if we have mobile phones, and we talk on the mobile phones, so there has been earlier radios and televisions, which also processes audio signal. So how is an audio, what is the process of audio signal processing? So you need to do amplification of the signal so that a weak signal can be magnified and can be heard clearly. Also, we sometimes perform equalization. Uh, perhaps you have seen an equalizer. It comprises of a number of uh, rheostatic norms, slides, and you can enhance or suppress certain audio components. For example, if you want to increase the bass in a music, or if you want to increase the higher frequencies in a music. So that can be uh, augmented or suppressed using an equalizer. So that is the signal processing. Similarly, let's say uh, we are having a karaoke uh, singing or duet singing where two or more people are singing together or we are trying to overlay their voice over a music. So that is uh, the addition of audio signal. You need to perform that addition of audio signal. Apart from the audio domain, for example, we have an accelerometer, which is a sensor. Uh, can you guess where is usually an accelerometer present in the consumer electronics world? 
yes it is present in mobile phones so you have accelerometer there and what does an accelerometer do it measures the acceleration of the body so let's say this is the accelerometer's output you see it is giving the acceleration of the body over time so what do we get if we integrate the acceleration if we perform integration of acceleration what would we have so if we amplify if we integrate the signal of uh if we integrate the, the signal so we know this that a is equals to dv by dt so it means that if we integrate acceleration we'll get the signal of the velocity so this is what you see here so from an accelerometer you can get the velocity as well and if we integrate the signal of velocity you will get the distance cover which is over here so from a single sensor you can get multiple outputs but again you would require a circuit that can perform this integration so do you have the knowledge how to make an integrator i believe you must have studied it in your first course of basic electronics yes we can do it with the help of an operation amplifier and we will see you can also add the signals there you can also perform equalization operations using an operational amplifier so these are all mathematical functions that requires some sort of a circuit and the best uh, solution for it is an operational amplifier so that's why it is in great demand a circuit uh, so what is an operational amplifier it is basically a circuit block that provides you with amplification with noise suppression and it can perform different mathematical operations so noise is also a major issue with analog signals so operational amplifier is very good in suppressing that noise so it was earlier the concept was presented in 1940s and it was painted by bellas back in 40s the first operational amplifier ic was made in 1963 u702 by bob bridler uh, but it only gained popularity in late 70s and early 80s why because of the cost it cost a lot and therefore it was not popular uh, from the very word go because of its uh, higher cost but nowadays operational amplifiers are used very much in all the circuits in fact uh, the discrete amplifier i have seldom rather i have even ever i have never seen um, a transistor being used as an amplifier on a commercially available circuit on a pcb whenever there is a requirement of an amplifier people used to uh, have an operational amplifier then think about it if i say regardless of the method i just want to have an amplifier so you can use a common source amplifier you can make a common gate amplifier you can have a cascode stage and then you would have to worry about the biasing of the circuits you will have to worry about the supply how is the signal is going to get in and out the input impedance matching output impedance matching everything one quick fix could be you can use an amplifier you can use it in inverting configuration or non inverting configuration and there you have it you can amplify the signal for instance i have shown here one of the amplifier which is now commercially available lm324 just see at this piece of beauty it contains four operation amplifier the null set or offset nulling is internally compensated so you have four operation amplifier in a single package whereas i am asking just for a one amplifier so the cost um, it has come down to such a point that uh, it doesn't make much difference so it may be a hard breaking revelation for you but uh, the fact is whatever you have done with the common source and common drain and common gate most of the time that would never see the light of the day rather all that information was required to study this very course and some of the subsequent subjects but a uh, common source amplifier as such in discrete form or common drain amplifier in discrete form is rarely ever used whenever you want to have that amplification you can get it with operational amplifier 
I'm stressing on this so much because it would give you an idea if you want to create some project, you have to make some project, then what is the component and the block selection that you need to do? And that the importance of operation of the file is underscored. It is a very important piece of analog circuitry and therefore we need to concentrate it over it. And uh, do not think that operation amplifier is just a relic or a legacy block. No, it is. There are still being operation amplifiers being uh, made and newer versions of operation amplifiers in the market. There are virtually uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of models of operation amplifiers which are currently available. The, uh, I've also mentioned a website here. This is a very good website and it could give, uh, it describes about 10 uh, operation amplifiers that are commercially available and uh, are good for. Uh, general purpose use. One question might arise that, okay, an operation amplifier is supposed to amplify a signal. Then why do we have such a large variety of operation amplifier? What does an operation amplifier have uh, that needs to be improved? Other things. So what is uh, there in the circuit that needs to be improved with other things uh, in the operation amplifier? Why do we have so many of the operation amplifier? Actually, it depends upon a number of things. For example, earlier operation amplifiers were made using BJT. Now the amplifiers are being made with FET. Earlier operation amplifiers, they could work up to, let's say, 30 volts. Now the circuits are working on a much lower supply voltages. So therefore, we have different variants of the circuit which is working at 30 volts, at 22 volts, and 18 volts, and 15, and 12, down to 3.3 volts and 1.2 volts, and even lower. So that's why we have different versions of operation amplifier. Then, for instance, we need, an, we need to amplify a signal from an audio source, and then we have a signal that we need to amplify from a video source. Please keep it in mind that an audio signal is about 4 kilohertz or 8 kilohertz in frequency, whereas an analog video signal is like 5 megahertz in bandwidth. So once video signal needs a much more bandwidth rather than an audio signal. Would you use the same operation amplifier for the two purposes? Definitely not. Similarly for signals, let's say for uh, neural amplifiers, the sensors that we use for getting the signals from the brain and creating brain-computer interfaces. Those signals, they have a very low frequency and a very low amplitude. So therefore, we need amplifiers which have an excellent response at lower frequency. And therefore, we have those sort of circuits. Then there are circuits for sensors, there are circuits for actuators, and th therefore, I think you get the hang of it that why do we need so many of the amplifiers. Anyway, coming to this slide that inside the operational amplifier. I have tried to underscore the importance of operational amplifier and we have already perhaps used an operational amplifier. Now we try to peek inside and see what must be present or what is present inside an operational amplifier. So let's make some guesses. Uh, what do we require from an operational amplifier? We require the operational amplifier to perform certain things. For instance, it should amplify the difference of the signal between its two input and produce to us a very high output. One thing, the input impedance of the operational amplifier should be infinite. The output impedance of an operational amplifier shall be zero. From these requirements, what we envisage is something like this. That is, we have two inputs and they are like open circuit, only then it is going to have uh, infinite input impedance. And at the output impedance, uh, we have shown a voltage-dependent voltage source. The gain of this voltage-dependent voltage source is A, which is a very big number, may I say. And if I ask you about the output impedance, the output impedance of a voltage source is zero, unless otherwise stated. So it has a zero output impedance. So from a modeling point of view, this is what is present inside an operational amplifier. Okay. But uh, in terms of known circuit components and known blocks, it is just a model, a circuit model of the operation amplifier, but what is really present inside? Let's see. So then it has a differential input. So there should be a differential input stage inside 
and it is supposed to provide you with a very high output. So then there is a gain stage inside the operational amplifier and at the output, as I've said, it should have a very low output resistance. So there is going to be a out, low output resistance stage. Why have we uh, divided it into these blocks? Because from our previous study, we studied common source and common gate and common drain and differential amplifiers. Let me remind you. They all had certain properties. For example, source follower or common drain, it does not have any gain, but it has a low output stage. So this is what we surmise. This is what we guess must be present inside the output stage block. Right, so this is what we are uh, now seeing that it, uh, there must be a differential input stage, a gain stage, and an output stage. So in these output stage, op amp stages, what is the circuit block which is present in each and every stage? So in the differential input stage, Obviously, there is a differential amplifier. A differential amplifier senses the signal between the two inputs and it provides you a differential output or a single-ended output as required. In this particular case, perhaps it is best to have a single-ended output. The advantage is using a differential amplifier is that it also provides you with some amount of gain. So we get some gain and then we get a differential input stage. The second stage is where we get the bulk of the gain. So what would be present in this stage? Yes, it would be an amplifier. That amplifier could be a common source amplifier. It could be a common gate amplifier. Or it could be a combination of the two. That is, we have a common source followed by a common gate amplifier. Can you name the circuit where a common source is cascaded to a common gate? What is it called? It has a particular name. Yes, it is called a cascode configuration so maybe it is a cascode configuration maybe it is a single stage maybe it comprises of common source and common source configuration whatever but we will be getting some very high gain from this stage so we will have some gain from the differential amplifier we have gain from the second stage the overall gain is going to be the multiple of the two the product of the two and last but not the least is the common drain or the source follower stage because what we aspire to achieve and the output is a very low output resistance. And the only configuration that we know that offers low output resistance is in fact the common drain stage. And let me tell you that the ideal gain for a common drain stage is unity. Practically speaking, it is close to unity, something like 0 0.9 or 0 0.95, but it is nevertheless uh, not really an amplifier in that sense. However, it is going to offer you low output resistance. So this is the picture that we start to have that a differential amplifier cascaded with a common source, cascaded with a common drain, and voila, we have an operational amplifier. This is how an operational amplifier can be made. So let's dive up. And uh, before that, uh, we can also look at some other issues. It is not that simple. There are also some other things, for example, we have to decide about the DC biasing of each and every stage. And uh, also, there is an active load configuration and then there is a passive load configuration. When we talk about the passive load, it means that we are connecting a resistor at the output uh, as the load. Uh, and in comparison, an active load means we are putting in an active device such as the diode or a transistor as the load. Also, when we design an operational amplifier, we do not only look at the differential input, the gain, and the low output resistance. Rather, we also have to take care of the bandwidth of the circuit. If the circuit is working in our interested region of frequency or not, then there is the stability of the circuit. That is, whether a small impetus at some frequency might uh, make it into a runaway condition or that the change in temperature can... Uh, really deteriorate its performance. That is what is the stability about. Also, we have to look at the precision, how precise uh, the operation amplifier is, the slew rate, that is uh, how quickly the output changes, the common mode rejection ratio, and other such parameters that needs to be taken care of in an operation amplifier design. So whenever we use uh, to have an operation amplifier design, we have to take care of all these issues, not only the input output impedance, the output impedance, and the gain.
but all these factors have to be taken into account as well. Most amplifiers that we have discussed earlier, so our discussion was focused about designing of an operation amplifier as an IC itself. That is the purpose of the integrated circuit is to perform the operations performed by an operation amplifier. It contains an operation amplifier or multiple copies of it. But uh, nowadays, as all the integration and VLSI is progressing, the IC of modern day performs much more operations than just an operation amplifier. And the circuits are more dense. It contains millions of transistors. So now it is possible to have the entirety of a big function into a chip. For example, for the operation of a television, the circuitry required for the operation of a television, earlier it might have been realized by using 5, 6 or 10 ICs together on PCB. But nowadays, whatever is the signal processing and everything required for the operation of a television can be integrated into a single chip. So that is a system on chip SOC solutions we are talking about. So in such solutions, it is very normal that we have number of operational amplifiers, dozens of operational amplifiers, even more in a single IC. So these operational amplifiers are all interconnected together and perform the functions, whatever they are designed for. So in such cases, these operational amplifiers, they have the input which is generated on the chip and their output is not provided to any load outside the chip. In fact, these operational amplifiers work as an intermediate stage. They get a signal from somewhere, performs a mathematical operation or something and provides it to the next stage. So in this case, you see, since it is not driving a load, a big load, it is not necessarily to have a low output impedance. Hence, the operational amplifiers for an integrated circuits design and in designing a big IC, the operational amplifier design task is primarily reduced to the design of two stages. The first, the differential stage, and the second is the gain stage. So you can say it becomes less complex, but there are other stringent requirements arising from the fact that everything has to be integrated into a very small chip real estate. And that puts a major pressure on the designer. Okay. And in the integrated circuits that we are going to look at, uh, the two major concerns would be for us are current mirror-based biasing, how to bias a circuit using a current mirror, how can we have a current mirror designed to be accommodated into an IC, and how can we, uh, how, what are the problems that we might face and what are its solutions. This is what we are going to study in the subsequent lectures. Also, the active loading of amplifiers is something I believe you haven't covered in your previous lectures. So we will look into uh, the active load of amplifiers in a bit detail. So now we can see that the IC operational amplifier sub-circuits. The differential amplifier, it will have an active load because there are certain advantages of having active load. So the differential amplifier, it will have its own active load. The gain stage, it will have its own active load and everything would be uh, biased by the multiple copies of a DC biasing circuit that we need to design. So in this circuit, what are we going to design? Uh, the active loading is something that we need to concentrate on. The DC biasing would be something that we would focus on. And the, for the differential amplifier and the gain stage, primarily I can assume that you have already knowledge of these two. If you think that you lack something uh, in the stand, under understanding of differential amplifier and the gain stage, please refer to the circuits and the description that I have provided on the YouTube. And you can always uh, consult your books and contact me for queries. So this is it for the second lecture. It is a bit uh, shorter than the uh, 40 minutes stipulated time, but uh, sorry, the first lecture had been a bit longer and that's why I have reduced the length of the second lecture. In the third lecture, now uh, we will be covering about the active loading of the circuit. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye for now.